rage at Corby Air saw France's Richard Sanks burn through the morning fog. South Africa's Alfie Cox was hot on his tail in France and on the eight kilometer stage in Spain. And backing him up was Spain's Nanny Roma on the V-twin. Others though were getting into all sorts of trouble. Petter Hansel was out of the blocks to be fastest overall after the French and then the Spanish stage. Teammate Mashuoka was getting it all crossed up on the slippery mud to be in touch just 29 seconds back. Others had their worlds being turned upside down. Kuhn Vaters of Holland was okay, but another Dutchman, Johan de Roy, was leading in the truck class. <laughs> Nearly three weeks of punishing motorsport lay ahead. Eight and a half thousand kilometers with three stages in Europe, three in Tunisia, five in Libya, and six into Egypt. It meant that the Jubilee Dakar would cover some of the best terrain ever. Finally, the finish would be at Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. Stage four, the first in Africa, short one in Tunisia. And having retired over the last two years, Spaniard Roma was winning through the first 25 kilometer stage. Big rider, big bike. The 950cc V-twin Austrian KTM was just the thing for the job. However, Richard Sanks was leading the rally overall by just 22 seconds ahead of fellow Frenchman Cyril Dupre. Number seven, Dupre had only just recovered from breaking his collarbone just a matter of two months earlier. Meanwhile, with the cars, Peter Hansel was starting to up the pace with a win. The six-time bike winner of the Dakar had a chance this year. However, chasing him hard was Belgium's Gregoire de Mavis in his BMW X5 3-litre twin-turbo diesel. He was only 22 seconds back. Four-time winner of the Dakar from Finland, Ari Vatanen was third equal on the stage. Level with Vatanen was Jean-Louis Schlesser with his small, light and svelte rear-wheel drive buggy. Whatever it lacked in looks, it gained in sound. Kleinschmidt had all sorts of problems in the stage with her brand new VW buggy. She rejoined without doing the usual mirror signal manoeuvre. She nearly hits Luke Alfond with his BMW, and after a lot of standing on the horn, Alfond was through. The second proper stage in Africa was a long one, 285 kilometers, and it certainly was there to catch people out. It certainly did that. Three top running cars all out at the same spot. A hidden dip on a flat out stretch saw the end of Germany's Dieter Depping. The VW had rolled at an enormous speed. De La Verne and Luc Alfond were also in trouble with their Nissan and BMW respectively. Which stone did you hit? Same as you. The problem is that there was a kink here, but the road book said it was narrow and straight. Maybe the stone wasn't there when the road book was made. Others got through, so I just don't know. Dieter Depping's co-driver said the problem is that in the road book it was noted as a single caution, but it's certainly more than that. Okay. Yeah, I got it.
Look at the road. There is this stone right in the middle and nothing in the road book. Mashiroka pressed on to win the stage ahead of the carnage and in doing so he established himself at the head of the overall standings. I'm very happy after this first real stage in Africa. I overtook many cars, the Nissans, the BMWs, but nobody could follow me. Our car is very well prepared, and I think that we are really in the best position to stay at the head of this rally. Sank won the stage with his KTM to make a mirror image to Mashiroka's achievement. He was first overall two by a mere two minutes and 25 seconds. Mioni may be quiet, but he's a thinker. He was there, ready to pounce. However, he ran into some rear tyre problems at the end of the stage. A 40 kilometres da qua. 40 kilometers before the end of the stage, I felt the tyre moose inflate because there was a slow puncture. It was a really bad day today because I would like to have taken some time away from the leaders, but in the end it was me who lost time. In the biggest class of them all, it was Russian Kamaz driver Vladimir Chagin who was at the top of the timing sheets by the slim margin of just 1 minute and 21 seconds over former winner Carol Laprace of Czech Republic with his Tatra. De Roy was next up. Stage 6 and we were going further and further south. Problems though for the 99 and 2000 winner of France, Jean-Louis Schlesser with his brand new Ford powered buggy was in all sorts of problems. The engine had been starting to make some funny noises just before our camera crew caught up with him and it was not looking good. We're out, that's all. Everything was okay. We were catching Stefan Orad and we were right behind him before there was a, a strange noise. I preferred to stop to avoid destroying the engine. If there is a problem, I'd prefer to find it rather than have a load of bits. The Mitsubishis, though, were just streaking ahead. One and two, and the others were left for the scraps. was a battle between Gregoire de Mavis with his BMW and Kenjiro Shinazuka in his brand new Nissan pickup. And having started dead last after having lost seven hours the day before, Luc Alphon passed 115 cars and trucks on the stage. The two Chevrolet Pro trucks rear-wheel drive was stunning them in good stead through the sands. They were easily top 20. Tinso and Vigarou doing an excellent job. Jean-Pierre Fontenay was in trouble though. We've got the front beached and we're going to have to dig ourselves out. He lost 45 minutes. Elsewhere, muscle power may have been the better option. The sand was getting softer, 
the sand was getting deeper. Problems though for former European rally champion Yves Lube. And also the roller in France on the Corbière stage. Kuhn Vatter says, my wife thinks that I have a good time on this rally. And then the barge boards broke. He was annoyed. Some were grounded, whilst others flew sky high. The privateers were trying to keep up with the works KTMs. They were just ahead of the rest. South Africa's Alfie Cox was victorious on the stage, though. Whilst third overall was Spain's Nanny Roma with his V-twin. Mione was second. And Richard Sanks was leading overall. Problems further back for the amateurs. Christian de Keet in trouble. I was going over the dunes well, but you only have to have two bad dunes and it just destroys you. You lose all of your effort. And struggling with an injured wrist, he continued on, but not for long. Normally I'm very confident, but I've lost it all now. I need to believe I can do it. In the truck section, Dutchman Johan de Roy had taken the overall lead in his self-constructed machine. Stage 7, big mileage into Libya. Three days with nearly a thousand miles to be completed in some very hot and dusty conditions. But Richard Sankt arrived into Gat under a boiling sky. He continued to lead overall. Fabrizio Mioni was still looking towards the others to make a mistake. He was second overall. Nani Roma thought he'd taken a wrong tyre, but he was in touch with the leader. The Libyan countryside was just breathtaking. Unfortunately, Spaniard Isidre Esteve was out. My engine broke at about 100 kilometers. I rode slowly, but it felt worse and worse, and now I wait for the truck. On board with Stanovic, he says, the sun is in my eyes, I can hardly see. It's very difficult to follow the track, but it's such a strange place for me to be here. I'm doing about 100 kilometers an hour, so when I turn the corners, it's very dangerous. Kenjiro Shinazuka got lost, went to the back of the order, and then sped through to pass them all. But had he driven a little too quickly off the beaten track? In an attempt to establish that third position, a rear right puncture was absolutely catastrophic. That meant that the brand new Pajeros were continuing to run away with it. Another one to finish on the stage.
Finland, Larry Vatanen may have been away from the Dakar for seven years, but it was still hot in the desert. Others were getting lost in the middle of nowhere. And as the sun set, people were in trouble. Very hard at night. It's my first Dakar and it's not easy. And without lights, you're stuffed. See if the light's working. If they don't, well, in that case, I think it's finished. I need a light. But with some brilliant improvisation, he put some lights on his crash helmet, wired them up to the bike, and bingo. Stage eight, another biggie, nearly 500 kilometers, that's 300 miles, well into Libya. And Kenjiro Shinazuka with his Nissan pickup had had an enormous accident. Charging over a broken dune, he flew through the air and his head had hit the steering wheel with such force, it had bent it. Co-driver Delizotti saying we went too fast over a succession of smooth dunes and then we flew over another to land nose first. We rolled over and over and over. Look at the distance that the car is now from the crest of the dune. But soon the former victor of the Dakar was helicoptered away back to the bivouac and the world's best medical crews were tending to him. Only a couple of hours later, he was in an aircraft and en route back to Europe. The Mavia, still distressed about the Shinazuka accident, said after the crash for 50 kilometers, I just couldn't go quickly. I had the same accident three years ago. It was so fast, and then boom, over you went. I was really shocked. I was white. I had to nearly stop at one point and I throw some water over my face. Problems for Alfie Cox as well on two wheels. He had fallen off his Gulwars KTM and had injured his shoulder. This morning I got lost. And then you know the normal story. You're trying to catch up and I ran off the road yeah, into the big sea of waves. It's normal and I've broken my shoulder, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Privateer Simon Drew had also fallen. He had injured his leg and was out. Jean-Marie Warrant was also in trouble for obvious reasons. Ironically, it was the safety beacon that had ignited itself. The bike was a crisp. Once more, Libya was giving us some unbelievable scenery. And on two wheels, Italian Giovanni Sala with the big 950 V-twin KTM took his first outright stage win of the year. Fabrizio Mioni though, his teammate, was in the lead. On board with Jean-Pierre Strugo in his Mercedes, he says, I think about the first timers coming through here, it's just amazing. For me, it's my 18th time and still it's amazing. Jean-Pierre Fontenay had his first trouble-free day and was then third on the stage, ninth overall. But at the front, Hiroshi Mashiroka was quickest on the stage by nearly six minutes to take the overall lead. Belgian Gregoire de Mavis was chasing them hard to be in third position overall with his BMW. 
Jutta Kleinschmidt was fifth overall, losing out with the top speed of the Volkswagen on the quick bits, but gaining through the dunes. Portugal's Carlos Souza was easily in the top ten with a seventh position overall. Whilst on four wheels for the very first time, German Andrea Meyer was in the top 40 with her diesel Mitsubishi. Overall in the track class, Vladimir Chagin was quickest ahead of Gerard de Roy by a mere 32 seconds. Stage nine from Sabah to Zilla, another monster. 567 kilometers, but it was not good for Spain's Nani Roma. He had a big crash at nearly flat out speed. He was airlifted back to the bivouac, and unfortunately, he was en route back to Spain. He says it was a right kink at 140, 150 kilometers an hour. There was a stone and it threw me off. It was a big stone. I rolled over and I've hurt myself quite badly. Speed was to be the essence as the stages got quicker. If you're quick, you'll be all right in the desert. Richard Sankt was unfortunate through the stage. He fell and twisted his forks, but he was continuing in the lead. Fabrizio Mioni lost six minutes as he stopped to help Roma in the middle of the stage, but he was still second overall. Third was a brilliant position for Cyril Depre, even though he thought it was a trial section at one point. At least he didn't put his foot down. So Sank had a lead of just over a minute from Mioni, Depre in third, Brucey in fourth, and De Azevedo from Brazil in fifth. Vatanen really bought the spirits of Nissan up after Kenjiro Shinazuka's accident from the stage before. He won the stage through to Zilla and the Finn was back on true Dakar 4. The two Mitsubishis were well ahead at the front. It was formation flying for the new Pajeros. Stefan Pederhansel and Hiroshi Mashuoka were Harry Flatters. The trouble was, at times it was a little too fast for Hiroshi Mashuoka and he ran into tyre problems. A total of five punctures on the stage. And he had to call on friendly teammate Jean-Pierre Fontenay for more tyres after his own three spares were used up. What this meant was Peter Hansel extended his lead as Mashuoka dropped back. Gregoire de Mavius had a couple of punctures, but he was in third position overall. Germany's Jutta Kleinschmidt was fourth overall with her turbo diesel Volkswagen, whilst South Africa's Keneal de Villiers lost over an hour with a broken rear toe arm. Stefan Arado was in the top 10. Peter Hansel extending his lead over Mashuoka after stage nine. De Mavius third, Kleinschmidt fourth, Carlos Souza in fifth. With regards to the trucks, Gerard de Roy, the son of Johan, was in control with his DAF truck out of Holland. 